Shares of MasterCard are under pressure after the payments giant missed estimates. Growth in net revenue also was a disappointment. The company cut its forecast for the year. Our next guest says despite the miss, this is a buying opportunity for more. We're joined by Harshita Rawat, who is the senior research analyst at Bernstein, joining us with her insights. Um, Arshida, how should we uh, think about that cut to revenue forecast? Is it a big deal? Is it really just adjusting for currency? How are you thinking about it? Thank you very much for having me here. Um, it is just about currency. So since MasterCard last gave guidance, FX um, has deteriorated, and that's all. So their constant currency revenue growth guidance and also their OPEX guidance hasn't changed on constant currency terms. What has changed is their nominal uh, US dollar revenue growth guidance, um, which is literally just FX. Everything else is kind of stable uh, versus the last time they reported. The stock, though, has pulled back nearly 9% from mm -hmm. its peak in March. The market has also been under pressure. But for those that are concerned about a slowdown in the consumer, how much is that showing up at MasterCard? So we're not really seeing that in a meaningful way um, or at all. So if you think about their overall purchase volumes, right, like that's the key metric to look at MasterCard on. U.S. card volumes grew um 7% in Q1, there was a little bit of benefit from the leap year, but you know, adjusted for that, it was 6%. It was fairly consistent with what they saw in the fourth quarter. And then if you think about the April trends, uh, they're also fairly consistent um, if you kind of adjust for the leap year in Q1. And they did see some weakness in international purchase volumes and cards. But some of that is also because of the timing of Easter. You know, this time it was in March. They usually it's in April. So there's a little bit of that. But overall, it's really stable numbers. Visa has also been caught up in the downdraft. Uh, another stock that you're bullish on. Is it kind of a similar situation? It's being um, sold down outside of strong fundamentals? Yeah, I think for both Visa and MasterCard, as you highlighted, some of that is just market weakness, right, in terms of where interest rates um, are trending over the last several weeks. But I think there is uh, a little bit of that concern around secular growth. Where is that incremental cash to card conversion story going to come from, especially because some of the headline numbers in the U.S. suggest 6% card volume growth, which is which is consistent with the you know last couple of quarters, but kind of lower versus history. Our view here is, look, there is there are areas in the world, you think about the U.S., where cash-to-card conversion story, the secular growth story, is a little bit ahead already. So you may see slightly lower volume growth in, in the years ahead, but there's still a lot of cash to convert, even in the U.S., and there's a ton of opportunity internationally. And then if you then take a step back, these companies are doing extremely well in diversifying their revenue streams and creating sizable services businesses, which is about a third of MasterCard's revenues, about 20% of Visa's revenues, which are growing 18, 19% year over year. So that also adds to the revenue growth. Um, so if you think about the valuation, uh, you know, some, something like a MasterCard trading at 27 times earnings on next year, we, we think it's a very good entry point and we really like to stock here. How should we think about ongoing litigation between the credit card companies and the National Retail Federation for the fees that um, they charge these retailers? There's a settlement in front that the um, National Retail Federation seems disappointed with. Um, is this kind of a, a sideline to uh, these businesses or, or could this be a, a material issue? Yes, yeah, so this uh, merchant class action lawsuit, which you're referring to, that's been going on for more than two decades. <laughs> um, if anything, um, right now, um, we kind of have some form of like a closure or finality. Um, now, the settlement which is proposed is still subject to approval by the courts. But what it does is two things. Um, one, it, it reduces interchange, which is a big part of the fees at merchants pay uh, in the form of credit card fees by around seven basis points. Um, as a reminder, in, interchange is not a revenue stream for Visa or MasterCard. That's a revenue stream for the banks. It's just that Visa and MasterCard set that interchange revenues. So that's one. Second thing that what that settlement does 
is kind of simplifies some of the rules around surcharging and how merchants can surcharge for specific kinds of transactions. Um, at the end of the day, what we find is consumers don't like surcharging. Many merchants don't do it for that same reason. And even if they do, uh, we don't see sizable impact on part volumes. So something we have to see how it plays out, but it's not a meaningful driver for Visa and MasterCard.